Where are you going, hero girl? Written and read by Waltzing the Fapars. Chapter 6. Patrol. They shared dinner together, yakitori that June and Hizashi had prepared while Eri-chan was going through all of her things and deciding exactly where she wanted everything to go, and the whole thing is delightfully domestic. By eight o'clock, though, Shoda knows he's put it off long enough. I've got patrol, Shoda sighed, running a hand through his hair. I'm going to head out now, but I'll be back about four in the morning. Can I come with, please? June asked immediately. I have my licenses and my costume. What? No, I want to go, Obero said immediately. No fair. Can I go? Eri-chan asked, tiny voice almost missed in the confusion. You are too young, June says gently, running a hand through Eri-chan's hair. And you don't have a costume or a license. Maybe when you're older. Until then, could you stay and protect Yamada-san for us so we don't worry about him being all alone? Hizashi turned his face away to hide a snort at that, but rallied quickly. Oh, I would be so lonely in the house by myself. I need two strong protectors. He winked at Obero, who flushed and looked away. Eri-chan flushes too, looking up at Hizashi with twinkling eyes. I can protect you. Shoda looks at June, who smiles brilliantly. I can keep up, don't worry. Give me two minutes to change and we can go together. Obero concentrates hard, and a wisp of a cloud about the same size as June appears, glittering black and purple. Here, this will take you to your room. Thanks, Obero. June jumped in immediately and was back at the door within two minutes in what must be her full costume, a dark purple jumpsuit that is almost identical to Shota's, her red capture scarf and orange goggles and black face mask all starting to look familiar, and her clashing fashion sense even more so. Shota shuts down the memory of his husband's excited signs, do you think that she was heirs, and instead asks her, are you sure? Of course, June says cheerfully, braiding her colourful fringe back in two tight sections, then tugging the rest back into a plait down her back with a metal-studded leather thong through the middle of it, tucking it away under her capture scarf. I was doing minor patrol while I was waiting to take Shi Hasaikai down, and even though I had my license with me, now no one will doubt that I'm an underground hero. Shoda snorts and turns away so she won't catch the hint of a smile on his face, though he suspects she can already tell. He gives Zashi a kiss on the cheek and murmured, Love you. Ruffles Eri-chan's hair and gives Obero a small smile and fist pump, and then they're out. Shota swings his capture weapon up and out, and June mirrors him the whole way to the precinct he is meant to be working with this week. June shadows him as he lets himself inside, her shoulders back and her head raised proudly, goggles and mask in place. Bit early for interns, isn't it, Eraser Head? Someone calls cheerfully. Someone else burbles out. Not like you to take on a kid. Shota raises his eyebrows, but continues to slouch further inside the building, looking for the detective he's supposed to answer to in this precinct. It's normally Matsuzaki, but she's out on maternity leave, so he guesses it'll be a surprise of whoever's been put in charge of the underground heroes until she gets back. Ah, shit, it's Hosho. Stay behind me, Shota murmurs to June. Pretend you're new to the whole scene. Immediately, her posture changes, shoulders scrunching up around her ears and fingers immediately fidgeting in front of her chest. Her head ducks down, making it harder to register what little of her face is visible between the goggles and the mask. Eraser head! boomed the old detective. Hello, hello! Ho show, my schedule for tonight. Ah, no pleasantries? You never change, Eraser head. Well, here you go. Shota reached out to take the schedule, but Hosho held tight to it. A moment. You're still teaching at UA? I am. I have students to attend to tomorrow, so I really do need to start on patrol. Mmm, mmm, but, Eraserhead, you don't have any girls this year, do you? I have twenty heroes in training, Shota says firmly. Their genders are irrelevant. Ah, uh, you raise a hair, that is so irresponsible. Women have no part on the battlefield. 
people who are capable and work for their goals have a part in whatever they work towards, Shota says firmly, tugging on the schedule again. Boy, girl, in between, so long as they have conviction, I'll train them. He tightened his grip and tugged on the schedule. He turned his back to Hosho and pushed June in front of him until they were outside. The moment they turned down a side alley and were hidden from view, June straightened back up again and looked at Shota. Was that just because he's sexist or something else? He's illogical, Shota sniffed at her, opening up his scheduling. Halving our forces based on something as baseless as gender? How stupid. Here, do you know how to read the scheduling? June takes the schedule from him, frowning down at the paper. These districts, some of them will change, but if we patrol either side of a street, I can relearn them from you tonight. She looked up, her frown changing from concentration to anger. Next time, can I quote any discrimination legislation at him? Not that he's ever listened, but you're welcome to try. Shota shrugged. At the end of a patrol, though, not the start. You had me hide so we wouldn't be stuck in debate? It was illogical and a waste of time, reverse. Shota shrugged and held out a hand for the scheduling. Ready? She took another moment to study the schedule, apparently taking a moment to fully commit it to memory, before passing it back. Lead the way, Eraser. Much as Shota hates to hear how terrible the future is, he will give it this. June holds her own. If he didn't know better, he would think that Reverse were either a big three third year or a first year sidekick. She's quick thinking and fast on her feet when breaking up bar fights or tackling minor villains. Her use of her capture weapon on shoplifters or pickpockets is textbook perfect and she is compassionate and to the point when talking to victims. Nearing two in the morning, they stop to look down on the streets and she pulls a jelly pouch each out of her pockets with a bright grin and a gotta keep up our strength. He snorts at her and enjoys the jelly, even if it is peach mango, as it's nice to see that June planned ahead to accommodate both of them. It's been a while since he had an intern of his own. That wasn't a vigilante? And it's been even longer since he's had a partner. June has experience not just with the streets, but, he thinks, with Shota himself. She covers the areas he isn't looking at, and she calls for him as she dives into the streets so that he at least knows where she's going. She keeps a notebook in her belt that she jots times and keywords down in after each takedown so that she remembers everything for the paperwork later. When three o'clock comes around and they've done their rounds, they head back to the precinct to start on their paperwork, passing other underground heroes as they go. Reverse is polite and friendly to all of them, greeting them brightly with a bow and a, I'm Reverse, I'm you. She doesn't stop for more than that, so Shota doesn't scold her for wasting time, though he does give her side eyes that he knows she picks up on. She's starting to flag a little by the time they reach the precinct, shoulders rounded with exhaustion and breathing a little harder than it had been previously. You can nap while I do the paperwork. He offers once they're seated at one of the desks set aside for the underground heroes, paperwork stacked neatly. She immediately straightens up and declares that she's fine and more than capable of filling in her share of the paperwork, immediately taking a form and starting with her most recent incident, rescuing a drunk girl from an opportunistic man in an alley. Shota pats her on the shoulder, fetches them both tea and comes back to start on his own paperwork, starting with his first incident of the evening. By 3.30, they've almost finished their paperwork without any incidents. And then Hosho makes a reappearance. He raises a head, he bellows, making everyone present jump and causing Shota and June to both ready their capture weapons. Is that a girl? June's shoulders immediately stiffened and straightened to her full height. When she speaks, her voice carries clearly. I'm the time-turner hero, reverse. I'm an underground hero. My gender is irrelevant, and to presume otherwise is an act of gross misconduct, misogyny, and discrimination. The few female officers and prisoners are all hiding smirks at this, watching eagerly. Hosho is not well-liked by the female populace, and for very good reasons. Hosho splutters at her. 
<laughs> Young lady, that is no way to talk to anyone, let alone a superior. You're a detective, yes? By Japanese law, an underground hero is on the same level of authority as a police chief, whilst a licensed intern may have the same capacity and authority as that of a detective. By law, we are on the same level of jurisdiction, thus neither is superior to the other except for how we conduct ourselves when in the presence of other people. Reverse smiles, Shota's scariest ghoul smile, and he's not even surprised anymore. He's not going home without adoption papers, damn it! If we are going over personal conduct, though, I might even go so far as to say you were the Kohai. Hosho snarls something, then declares, A woman is not as strong as a man. In what capacity? Reverse demands in a chillingly polite tone. Shota turns back to their paperwork, finishing his and starting to look over what Reverse had completed of hers. Mental, physical and emotional strengths vary from person to person and one shouldn't judge another without prior knowledge of that person. More bluster, a demand to see Reverse's licence, which she holds up readily enough, though she refuses to hand it over. Some more bluster, which Reverse continues to discredit and, true to her word, quote legislation and even research against. Shota kind of wishes he'd thought to start recording, because Hizashi is going to love this. Hosho is as red as a fire truck and nearly as loud by four o'clock when Shota finally calls an end to it. Reverse, were these all of your forms? Ah, no, sorry, Razor, one left. She smiled brilliantly, far sweeter than the ghoulish expression she'd worn against Hosho for the last half hour. She immediately turned her back to Hosho and started to fill in the final form, pen flying across the page. Shota tries not to snort. Hosho, our shift is almost done, Shota says in his driest tone. Surely there's other heroes you need to check in with other than my intern? Hosho is basically apoplectic at this point, so he turns around with a sound like a tea kettle and walks away. Shota will savour this moment for a good long while, he expects. Stay here, he tells Reverse, standing and cracking his back. I've got some more paperwork to take home for Obero, and then we can clock out. She salutes him cheekily and knuckles down once again. As he walks away, many of the officers and other detectives call out comments about Reverse's speech, but he ignores most of them. He does flick off a text to Zashi that says... How do we determine when they're whose daughters? Because I kind of want to take credit for June tonight, but honestly, think this is a you moment. It's four in the morning. Zashi won't wake up until Shota crawls into their bed after a quick shower, and even then, Shota's pretty sure he has a radio gig today, which means they might have half an hour together before Zashi needs to be on the road. Large sections of their communication these days is through text, but they make it work. They're supposed to have next weekend off together, and they had planned to have a date night. They might change it to a big group outing with Obero and the girls instead. He grabs the paperwork that Obero will need to re-establish himself as a living person, grabs the re-enrolment paperwork for UA while he's there. Any precinct that has anything to do with Shota is contractually obligated to have this paperwork on hand and retrieves two sets of adoption papers to have on hand so that they can ask the girls later in the week if they will stay. Shota's pretty sure they will, but it would be nice to have the official paperwork handed in to make it legitimate in the eyes of the law. When he returns to reverse, she's hunched over her cold tea and trying not to fall asleep. Should I piggyback you home? He asks, amused. She blinks up at him sleepily and mumbles, Pretty sure 15 is too old for piggybacks. Then we better get home before you fall asleep on me. He helps her up, takes their paperwork and drops it off with the clerics, and then they swing home. When they arrive, Shota makes June use the bathroom first, leaning against the wall with a timer on so that neither of them falls asleep before they actually get to bed. He wakes with a start when it goes off after five minutes, and hears June curse from the bathroom. When he knocks, she hisses, I was only dozing! I'm going! I'm going! Shota smirks to himself, leans back against the wall, and then starts awake when June comes out three minutes later, in a mist of steam, and running a wide-tooth comb through her damp hair. She smirks back at him, and leans back against the wall on the opposite side of the door, setting a timer on her own phone. Your turn. 
He ruffles her hair on his way past and scrubs as quickly as he can, changing into his pyjamas quickly, and is outside right as June's alarm goes off. She grabs the elbow of his sweatshirt and spins him back into the bathroom. Mike won't kiss you if you don't do your teeth, she scolds by rote. This kid. Once their teeth are done, they both head to their respective rooms, only to stop as they go past the living room. Obero and Mike are sleeping on the couch, with Erichan sprawled over their laps. June giggles and carefully picks up Erichan. Shota sighs and shakes Obero and Mike's shoulders until both startle awake. So, Zashi asks his muzzly, hand reaching for the side table where his hearing aids are on the charge. What are you doing out here? Shota asks his Obero, who's blinking up at him and rubbing the sleep from his eyes. Shota signs his question so that Zashi knows what's happening too. We waited up for you, Obero cheered drowsily. We wanted to welcome you both home after your first patrol together. Thanks, Shota smiles softly, helping Obero up and then Zashi. But it's nearly five in the morning. Go to bed. Obero whines, realises, blushes and then commits. But it was nice having a sleepover together. June hands the still-asleep Erichan to Shota, who takes her gently, and then sets about collecting the spare futons and rolling them out on the living room floor, grabbing pillows and blankets enough to make a very comfortable nest. Sleepover time! June cheers quietly, helping Shota lower Erichan to the middle of the nest. June goes to grab the lights, while Shota and Zashi settle on either side of Erichan, with Zashi on the outermost edge for an easier escape when he has to go to work himself. He passes out as soon as his head hits the pillows again. Obero settles carefully on Shota's other side, and then June flings herself on his opposite side as well. Is this okay? She asks as Obero, just in case. Shota slits his eyes and peeks over the pair to see Obero holding back tears. Yeah, Obero chokes out, doing absolutely nothing to hide how wet his voice sounds. He hugs June back and settles more firmly into Shota's side. Yeah, Jun-chan, this is great. End of chapter 6